And so when, you know, so perhaps Michelle, for your perspective, when you're investing in some areas of the business, while at the same time, others might be seeing decreases or, or changes, how should IT leaders and leaders across the organization be communicating these changes to their teams? Yeah, I think um, I'm big on you do it frequently, you do it transparently, and you do it authentically. Um, I don't think you try to sh sugarcoat things. Um, I think you want to have a little bit of the optimism that we see Gary and, and Raj have, and I'm an optimist too, but you need to be transparent about what the reality of the situation is. Um, you need to give them thoughts about how to navigate that and how to make those trade-offs and that prioritization work for them and for their organization. And again, you have to keep focusing on why is it important to do this now? I mean, I think making those tough choices now creates a resiliency in companies that will persist and take you through the other side of the challenge. So rallying your teams around that purpose of, again, creating that focus, creating that great execution during this time so that you're stronger and more resilient on the other side of it's really important. Um, but again, with communication, you know, the, the bottom line is often, 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 like you cannot communicate messages um, enough. I'd also add, Oh, please. let me jump in, Gary, for just one please, second. So um, I, I, I also think that just because you're an optimist doesn't mean that you're not direct. So I, I think there's some things that can kind of get lost. It's like, hey, we're optimistic, so we're not really going to share the whole story or we're not going to be decisive or we're not going to just say no to some things. And I think times of uncertainty are an absolutely great opportunity to say no to things. And, and it's so often that we don't really take that opportunity to say, no, we're not going to do that project. Or, you know what, I know that you really want this thing from me, but I just can't deliver it for you and I can't be successful at it. So I'm going to say no to it. Like that's, I think it's a real opportunity for organizations and IT organizations, especially to just say, hey, not right now. Like, I understand that you need this. I just can't get to it. It's not going to be done well. Here's the things that we are going to do well. And I, I would encourage everybody to use this as an opportunity to shrink that focus, do a great job with the things that you have on your plate, but not try and overextend yourself, especially in, in a tight uh, economy where, you know, you aren't going to probably get those resources that you're looking for. So Gary, sorry about that. Go ahead and jump in. No, I know I was going to take the, the, not the other side of that at all, but just to add to and really accentuate the point that Michelle made, which I thought was dead on, which is the word advocacy, uh, which is that uh, one way to think about great IT people are the people that not just manage what's in their in their direct responsibility, but are able to go to the other people, the sales leader, the engineering leader, the software leader, whatever, product leader, and basically come up with ideas for them to use technology that they may not know about uh, in order to be productive. I think the advocacy piece because the tech people tend to know a lot more about technology than the other folks. And so taking on that leadership role of advocacy and assistance and idea generation with, with the other functional leaders is a very, very big opportunity as a way to drive productivity inside the company. And in order to have more impact and you know more influence across the whole Excellent. organization. This is why you know I think IT and this whole area has become you know perhaps one of the most important departments in an organization it, it's you know it's at the center of just about everything hey raj i think that's a good point and what i've seen great it organizations and great it admins do is they have a unique visibility to platform usage and and they can see that and i think this is a great time to say hey guess what we actually have you know we have two electronic signing platforms that we're using. Can we consolidate to one? We're using um, three different kinds of communication tools. Would we be better served if we picked one and we went deeper on one? We have unused licenses. You know, we we have this, but I, you know, we were paying for 300 licenses, but I did an analysis and I'm only seeing utilization of 50. I think this is a great opportunity to use the tools and the techniques that you have as an IT admin to say, are we actually using the tools we have efficiently? And if we're not using them efficiently, like I said at the beginning, like 
we need to get them out of the system. And I think so it's a great opportunity for you to play that like housekeeping role because you have that unique perspective on the things people touch and what gets used in the system. I think that's a great, but let's continue down kind of within that level. Um, and I think maybe just, you know, continue to add on to it. Please subscribe and check out more content from us.